Our speaker this morning is Stephanie Lee. Stephanie is a four-year boarding student from Hong Kong. She's a co-president of the SGA, vice president of the Student Philanthropy Council, and a member of the debate and squash teams. She's also the proud roommate of Christy Arnold. Steph? Good morning, everyone. Who here likes roller coaster rides? Let's make some noise if you do. Yeah. Me too, but this wasn't always the case. One of the biggest turning points in my life so far involves a roller coaster called Hair Razor in Ocean Park, an amusement park in Hong Kong that boasts not only aquariums for viewing, but also some of the most thrilling rides in the city. At this point, I was about 10 years old, and one of my best friends at the time, Natalie, was an absolute daredevil when it came to roller coaster rides. She would tell me all about how her and her parents would go on all sorts of crazy rides when they would travel outside of Hong Kong and how much she loved the exhilaration of going on rides. I have to preface this by saying that I used to be the biggest wuss on earth. I couldn't handle Marvel movies, any sign of blood, including my own, and definitely not roller coasters. But at 10 years old, I was also extremely impressionable and really wanted to fit in. So I lied to Natalie and I told her that I loved roller coasters too. In fact, I wanted to convince her so badly that, would, that I would look up rides in different theme parks that I would go to, watch the front row POV videos that are taken on GoPros, and then tell her how much I loved the ride. Which to me now sounds like a pretty fat violation of the honor code. <laughs> Thinking back, it was kind of psychotic. One day, Natalie came to school telling me how, over the weekend, she had gone on a new ride in Ocean Park called Hair Razor, which was one of the scariest rides in the entire theme park. She asked me if I'd been on it before, and naturally I said yes, even though I obviously hadn't. I didn't think there'd be any consequences whatsoever, but boy, I would soon find out I was horribly wrong. Fast forward around a month later during our summer holiday, Natalie and I had decided to go to Ocean Park together with her parents and make a fun day trip out of it. The entire car ride there, she wouldn't stop babbling about us going on the hair razor together and how much she loved the drops, the floorless element of the coaster, and the many, many vertical loops. Obviously, I had to act all casual because I had supposedly been on the coaster before, so I could only respond fake enthusiastically in, oh my god, and I can't wait. My lie had completely trapped me into going on the coaster. In my head, my options were that I either reveal to Natalie that I had lied and risk losing a friend, or go on the coaster and risk passing out on, from fear. And at that age, risking my health seemed like a way better bet than risking a friend. So I stupidly went on the coaster. From the second the ride operator fastened my seatbelt and sentenced me to a minute of torture, I clamped my eyes shut. I decided I wasn't going to look once during the entire ride, because then at least I wouldn't have to face the reality of being upside down whilst on the vertical loops. Hair razor was also by the ocean, so I knew if I looked, the fear of falling into the ocean would probably eat me alive. Before I knew it though, the ride was over, and as the coaster slowed to its starting point, I opened my eyes and realized they were moist from the sheer force of me shutting them. That was when it hit me. The ride wasn't actually that bad. It was my perception of the worst elements of the ride that stressed me out. But the ride itself was invigorating. In truth, I would do it all over again. And this time, open my eyes because I truly did miss out on a beautiful view. This was the moment I started loving roller coasters. I have a second story to tell about roller coasters. After I started developing a love for them, I was keen on always exploring new ones. Most of the time, I was willing to go on all sorts of rides with no issue. When I was around 13, I heard about this new roller coaster from my brother who raved about it. Similarly, I had family friends who raved about it too. Naturally, with such high recommendations, I had to try it out. But this roller coaster was far, like really far from home. It took some convincing for my parents to let me venture out to try this roller coaster, but my efforts were rewarded. This roller coaster ride I was about to embark on was my journey to Hill. Prior to arriving at Hill, I truly couldn't wait to savor the ride that awaited me. I was a bit nervous, but it was a good nervous. 
It was the kind of nervous where I got a thrilling rush of energy that coursed through my veins and the kind that made my heart beat a little faster. My childhood involved a lot of movies about the typical American high school experience, like Mean Girls, as well as a specific series of novels called Mallory Towers that depicted the boarding school experience in England. I truly believed these two elements of media combined would be Hill in a, in a nutshell. So I eagerly waited to board the roller coaster, and when September 1st, 2019 rolled around, I stepped foot into my spot on the cart and the ride commenced. It started off easy, just like the rides always do. This translated to the second I stepped on campus for orientation and everything was smooth sailing. I was meeting new people, the upperclassmen were welcoming and the atmosphere felt like a warm hug. High school seemed easy and I thought the rest of the ride would be slow, flat and simple. But then, just like all the coasters, the hail came. The climb up to the highest point of the coaster. The point that one had to reach in order to anticipate the drop. Third from your winter was my climb. As most of us can agree, winter is admittedly one of the harder periods one spends at hill. After all, the gloomy weather and the lack of sunlight rarely breeds happiness for most people. On top of that, coming from Hong Kong never truly exposed me to the chilling winds and temperatures of Pottstown, so I struggled to adapt. For the first few weeks, after coming back from winter break, I confined myself to my dorm. Just as I had with Hair Razor, I shut my eyes and stripped myself away from the view. As my roller coaster cart approached the apex of the ride, moments before we would descend down the hill, I started regretting my decision to even board the ride in the first place. I thought to myself, why did I come to Hill? I couldn't even answer my own question. So I picked up the phone, called my parents, and told them I didn't want to come back to Hill the next year. Obviously, they denied my request. I was utterly stuck on this roller coaster ride, which meant I had to find other ways to relieve myself. So instead of keeping my eyelids shut, I opened my eyes and took in everything in my presence. Once I opened my eyes at Hill, I saw just how much support I had. I saw the people that were there all along, the ones that I'd shut myself off from. Because the moment I stepped out of my room and interacted with a friend, a teacher, a prefect, it was like my sensations of regret were erased. I no longer wanted to cry every second I thought of home and just cherish the moment I was spending with the people at Hill. Even a simple act of just going to the dining hall and grabbing a bite with my friends acted like a cure for my negative mindset of not wanting to be here. I soon realized the amount of joy I was stripping myself away from when I spent time alone in my room, actively trying to get away from everything that reminded me of Hill. What I had to do was keep my eyes open, not squeeze them shut. And so with this mindset, the big drop of my roller coaster ride was resolved. However, that didn't mean there, were other, there weren't other obstacles. After all, there were still many vertical loops looming ahead. But this time, I knew to release my tension. I knew to yell, to scream, to shout, even with profanity. In other words, I knew to verbalize myself. Don't walk through your challenges blindly because you are sure to miss help on the way. Willingly excluding yourself from happenings around you which is exactly what I did my third form year, is how we underutilize what our environment has to offer. So keep your eyes peeled open and look. Observe, take it all in. The Hill Coaster has been my most tumultuous, but also my best ride yet. Hill, thank you for bringing me a different experience every single year. From a partially remote year in the third form, a year of daily wave health checks and flocks in the fourth form, a year of semi-normalcy in the fifth form, and finally a year of normalcy or sixth form year, if we don't factor in the several changes in positions of power. We've had some of the wildest experiences overall, witnessing the eager voices of the Hill community on Instagram from the blue skies over the Dell post our third form year, experiencing our own minion rush this fall, and constantly hearing Joey yelling at us to buy his custom ink shirts. I believe our community is truly one of a kind and could not think of any other group as my family. Hill, 
You have proven to me that family doesn't have to be by blood. You have nurtured me, developed me, and embraced me even at times when I hated it here. You have shown me what true school spirit is, and I proudly say that I will never accept anything less, Wilston College. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, Hill, for the humid weather, the free shirts every year, the hot food fourth meals we used to have, shout out Dami for the Snapchat reviews, the little it's every weekend, the sweltering heat in dorms with no AC, the white flowered trees that smell like rotting fish, the chunky prison bracelets in fourth form year, the breakfast check-ins, and truly the ties that never sever. Thank you.